Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it is a gorgeous spring day here in Vermont and I'm gonna put out some more maple taps to collect some maple sap. Uh, my dad's boiling some of it down into syrup, but I'm gonna drink the rest. So I'm gonna show you how we do that now. A new maple sugaring supply company just opened up here in Bennington. So I went down there, Dominic and Grimm. You can check them out there. They're a Canadian company uh, with really great prices on cool stuff. So I got some food grade plastic lines to run the sap through. I've got uh, these, actually these are just water jugs that I got um, filtered water at the store and then emptied the water, used it for cooking and in the washing machine so it didn't go to waste. And I got a bunch of taps at Dominic and Grimm. I think the taps were 31 cents, no, the taps were 22 cents a piece and the tubes were 31 cents a piece. So 31 cents, 22 cents, and I think I paid probably 90 cents for the gallon of water. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole here in the cap large enough to fit the hose through. And I'm gonna use a half inch drill bit to do that. And I wanna take the cap off of the jug first so I don't get plastic shavings in the container. So I just drilled a half inch hole in the cap and clean out the inside to make sure there's no plastic chips or shavings that are gonna fall into the bucket. So when I put the cap back on, it's got a hole that allows the tube to go right in there like that. Today I'm just gonna put up four more taps. So I put them all together like that, put them in a big bag. Now we gotta go up onto the hill to the sugar bush. So now I'm up in the sugar bush and you can see some old mature sugar maple trees. We got a lot in here, we have hundreds. Uh, beautiful old sugar maples. You can see some of the taps I've already installed. You don't want to tap a tree that's under a foot in diameter. This guy I'd say is 20 inches in diameter. So we're gonna put a tap in there. So I put the bucket on the ground with the tube coming up to the tree. And then you can see how the tube is going all the way to the bottom of the bucket. You want to pull that tube out a few inches and then drill. Actually, I'm just gonna eye it. I'm gonna drill right about there in the tree. And the bit that I'm using for this is a 5 16 bit because that's the diameter of the tap. And I'm gonna drill about two inches into the tree. In fact, you can see it immediately starts to flow. Wow, look at that, we got a really good flow there. So then we take one of our taps, put it into the hole, and we gotta make sure that it's a nice tight fit. Oh, look at it running. Yeah, baby. So we're gonna hammer it in. So you want to make sure to get the tube up and over that first flare out in the tap so that you get a nice tight fit. And now we've got a steady stream of sap going right down into our bucket. And because the tube is going through a hole in the cap, we don't have to worry about bugs or debris getting in there. The reason the sap is running so well today is that it was below freezing last night. It was around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And when the tree goes below freezing, everything contracts, especially the carbon dioxide gas in the tree everything is compressed by that colder temperature. And this creates a vacuum which pulls the sap up into the tree. And when the temperature goes above freezing, like it is right now, it's around 40 degrees, that pressure caused by the expansion from the heat pushes the sap outward if you create a hole in there. So basically, by tapping into the tree, I'm allowing the tree to let off some of the pressure that is created by the warming temperatures. So you want a freezing night and then a warm day. If it doesn't go below freezing at night, the sap isn't going to get pulled up into the tree. So this time of year is perfect in Vermont because we have freezing nights and moderately warm days a little bit above freezing. All right, here we go, tapping some more trees. It helps if you tap the sunny side of the tree. I just put this guy in on the side that gets the most sun. And wherever the tree heats up the most, you can have the most expansion and therefore the most pressure coming out of the tree. It's about four hours later in the day now, and you can see I've collected almost a gallon of sap. So it's a really good day for the flow. And right there, you're looking at nature's perfect water. Filtered by the tree, a little bit of sugar, amino acids, which is what gives maple syrup its flavor. Uh, there's all kinds of polyphenols and phytonutrients from the tree. This is essentially the blood of the tree.
Maple sap is a perishable item, so you have to keep it refrigerated if you're not going to boil it down or pasteurize it in some way. So what I've done is buried a five gallon igloo container in the snow to keep it nice and cold so that I have a five gallon supply to drink and use in my smoothies. And all the additional sap that we're collecting, we boil down into maple syrup. It's time to take a little drink. Mmm, fresh Vermont maple water. Cheers. Oh, that is heaven. When you get it fresh and it's cold, there is nothing better. This is so much better than coconut water. Oh. Once we realize that we have a human brain that is inherently problematic in this modern world, we can start looking for a why that's not about trying to fill a void. 